I'd like to call this public hearing to order. Uh, we need our secretary, however, for roll call. <laughs> or perhaps I can conduct a roll call. Okay. Councilman McGough? Here. Councilman Rogan? Councilman Loscombe? Councilman Joyce? Here. And Councilwoman Evans is also here. Notice is hereby given that Scranton City Council will hold a public hearing on Thursday, September 12, 2013 at 5.30 p.m. in Council Chambers, Second Floor Municipal Building, 340 North Washington Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania. The purpose of said public hearing is to hear testimony and discuss the following. File of Council number 45, 2013, approving and accepting the updated City of Scranton capital budget for the year 2014, the first year revision and extension of the 2013 five-year plan. Is there anyone who cares to address Council? Perhaps we'll wait a few moments. Thank you. And see if anyone should appear. If not, then we will adjourn.
Yeah. Since no members of the public have attended the public hearing, I now call this public hearing adjourned. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world, and for all those who died in the last week, particularly Adam B. Slamas, beloved son, brother, grandson, and godson of our friend Mary Alice Burke, Thomas M. Salemba, devoted husband, father, grandfather, brother, and uncle. Kenneth G. Rogers, loving husband, father, grandfather, brother of our friend Brian and his wife Denise, and uncle. Mary Zale Kozicki, beloved wife, mother, sister of our dear friend Helen Kravath, grandmother, great-grandmother, and aunt and their dear families and friends who suffered their loss. Also, please remember in your prayers, Charlie Newcomb Sr., who suffered a broken hip and is recovering from surgery. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscomb? Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third Order, 3A. Minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Meeting held July 24th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B. Minutes of the Firemen's Pension Commission meeting held July 24, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Agenda for the Zoning Hearing Board held August 14, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Tax Assessor's Report. 
hearing date on August 21st, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, audit status from Robert Rossi and Company, received August 18th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3F, applications along with the decisions rendered by the Zoning Hearing Board on August 14th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have clerk's notes this evening? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you, Mrs. Craig. Do any council members have announcements at this time? One brief one. Um, thanks, Mrs. Craig. Uh, she put this in our mail. Lackawanna College is hosting a free electronics recycling event from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. September 21st at its parking lot at 501 Vine Street. And verbatim, uh, people can drop off computers, monitors, printers, laptops, televisions, stereo equipment, microwaves, GPS units, cell phones, copy machines, vacuum cleaners, and other household electronics. Um, so if you have any of those that are around and that uh, DPW cannot take or whatever the case may be, um, Lackawanna College from 10 to 2 on September 21st at the Vine Street parking lot. Is there anyone else? Councilman Loscombe is unable to attend tonight's meeting. The Southside Senior Center will hold its annual pasta dinner and basket raffle on Thursday, September 19th, 2013 from 4 to 7 p.m. This dinner is its major fundraiser of the year and helps to support the many and varied activities that are provided at the Senior Center. Tickets cost $9 for adults, $4.50 for children under 12, and takeouts are available. For additional information, please contact Rita at 570-346-2487. Scranton City Council will conduct a public hearing on Thursday, September 19, 2013 at 5.30 p.m. in order to gather citizens' input regarding the proposed City of Scranton 2014 Action Plan, which includes the CDBG Program, Home Investment Partnership Program, and the Emergency Solutions Grant, or ESG Program. The public is invited to attend. And that's it. Mrs. Craig? Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. Well, that was at the nick of time, wasn't it? I'm sorry I was late. <sighs> well, I, I, I don't know, what, with, with the thousands of adversities going on in this city, why council has chosen to get involved in, in Joe Burke's Vendetta with the Denaples. I, I just, it's just senseless. You, you spent $10,000 on a study. Why? What, what's, what's your definition of a study? Study was conducted by an engineering firm uh, after inspection and observation of Lake Scranton Road, and it contained very useful information, such as uh, what is needed on that road that should be provided by the city of Scranton, the reasons for the deterioration of the road, and the fact that um, there is another access route that can be taken by the, the uh, trucks that are traveling Lake Scranton Road daily. Okay, I understand that. This study, let's just take it apart real quick. 
This study says use an alternate route on Elmhurst Boulevard, right? Pardon? Could you yeah. repeat that? Yes, he yeah. said use it, use Elmhurst. I imagine whoever conceived the study was sitting there looking at a GPS. There is a bridge with a 12,000 pound weight limit on Elmhurst Boulevard. The Naples has been prohibited 35 or 40 years from crossing that bridge. This is known. Evidently, nobody ever drove down the street. They cannot use ash. They cannot go up and down ash street because there's a bridge 11 feet high. The trucks are 13 six. The only thing left is Lake Scranton Road, which has had uninterrupted truck traffic for 75 or 80 years. There used to be a rendering plant down there. The, the buildings are still there. They used to go up to the Music Street to New York City, Goosboro, and all before the expressways. If you go find out, there's a, a law about uninterrupted use of property. This is just such a waste where we, we, people need money to pay taxes and it, it, it's throwing down the toilet for a study like this. Like I said, all that gentleman that did the study had to do was drive down that road. He would have seen a bridge with 12,000 pounds. It's been there probably 100 years, 80 years. You have no other alternative but just let this slide. What else are you going to do? I There's only, you cannot landlock that business. I believe the city You know, you got the hardship, uh, uh, you got the hardship law of people being laid off temporarily even for Joe Burke. Here you are taking on people that got plaques all over town, the library, the, the, the medical school. Every place you look, He's been a benefactor to this city. I had coffee well, with to, him. Yes. To the nonprofits of the city. Pardon? A benefactor to the nonprofits of the city. Well, that, that, that's my feelings about it. I feel that way about Mr. Bolus. He has done so much for this city. I just find it heartbreaking, the attitude against him. But. I had coffee yesterday morning before 6 o'clock with the De Naples, and I promise you, you do not want to take the city, the city does not want to take them on over this issue. We'll lose, we're already facing 117% interest. You never talk to people over on, on, on Luzerne Street and Washington and, and Kapaus. They're hanging on to their houses by their fingertips. I talk to them almost every day someplace or other. There's great suffering in this city. Half the people are senior citizens and, and, and retired people and, and low income. We're certainly not a, in, in any position to handle 117% increase. And, and now, you're talking about a lawsuit. If it just cost a couple hundred thousand, we don't have the money. They could close that yard for a year and not hurt them. It would hurt the little people. I'm not talking as a former associate and a family friend. I'm talking as a taxpayer right now. If somebody asked me today, my taxes are paid. I told you I wasn't going to pay them, but I paid my taxes without a threat from uh, Mr. Courtright, I might say. It, it, I'm not mad at counsel, I'm not mad at anybody. I'm trying to avoid a situation that they can't understand. It, 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 it's going on and on like this. Thank you very much for Thank allowing you. me to speak, Ms. Evans. Absolutely, and our next speaker is Les Spindler. Good evening, counsel. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Good evening. Well, Good evening. It's good to be back. I missed most of the summer meetings due to my job at PNC Field for the summer. I was 
disappointed I couldn't come and speak on the Leahy Hall project, but I'm sure people are sick of hearing about it, but I want to put my two cents in. I was never a big fan of the University of Scranton, but I think this was the right thing to do, passing that legislation. We have to start getting along with the U. You know, with all due respect, the way this council went about trying to get the nonprofits to contribute more hasn't worked. So I think we have to try to get along with them. If this deal wasn't passed, whoever our next mayor is going to be wouldn't have a chance to go sit down with them and try and get them to contribute more. Now this is like extending an olive branch. Now maybe whoever the mayor is can sit down with them face to face and possibly try to get more money. Without this deal, that never would have happened. Uh, and also, if this deal wasn't passed, we would, the city would have lost in court anyway, as was proven with the zoning board. And we can't afford any more losses in the courts. Uh, I had to write everything down so I didn't forget it. And uh, as that building is now, it didn't benefit the city in any way. So I think a, a new building with jobs and whatever, like I said, in the long run, I think it will help the city. And as far as being historic, where was the, if that was so historic, where was the Scranton Historical Society? Going back to the baseball games, at every baseball game, there was a community organization of the night. And the one night near the end of the year was the Historical Society. And they were asked, what is the mission of the Scranton Historical Society? And the president said to protect and preserve the history of Scranton. Obviously, they didn't think that was part of the history of Scranton because they did nothing to save it. Uh, oh, another thing. I talked to someone over the summer and asked them why they thought it was so historic. And they said, I learned to swim there. I said, really? You want to save that building because you learned how to swim there? That, that's, that's unbelievable. Um, Mr. Mr. Spindler, actually, um, there was an article in the newspaper that was authored by a University of Scranton professor uh, who is researching women's history in the city of Scranton. And after the decision was made by city council and all was said and done, um, her art article was published in the newspaper and it indicated that the building indeed was highly significantly historical in terms of the women's movement at the turn of the century, the suffragettes, et cetera. Okay, that's just one person's opinion, but the historical society didn't think it was historical. And as far as being architecturally historical, as somebody said, it nothing more than a brick building. And Lackawanna College, the old Scranton Central Building, the Albright Library, the Cultural Center, those are beautiful buildings. So this building was just a, a plain brick building. Uh, moving on. During the summer, Mr. McGough, somebody asked if you called Frank Joyce to see if he, what way he's going to vote. And I don't blame you for doing that. And I wouldn't have driven 11 hours if I knew my vote wasn't going to count. So for you to get criticized for that, I thought was wrong. And uh, I think it was very admirable, admirable of you to drive 11 hours and give up your vacation time. Uh, last week, a, uh, a speaker was up here asking Councilman Joyce if he voted for the project because uh, he was offered a job at the university or to get votes from the unions. I thought that speaker was totally out of line. And those comments bordered on being slanderous. And I don't think you should come to this uh, podium and say things without proof. Uh, you know, freedom of speech only goes so far. You can only say certain things. You can't say stuff that isn't true. You open your stuff up to law open yourself up to lawsuits. Okay, enough on that. Uh, about two weeks ago in the paper, there was an article about the West Scranton Youth Center seeks casino cash. Uh, I've been told that Mr. Lewis wants $179,000 for that building. I've been told by people in real estate that that building isn't worth nearly that much. And uh, I think the city should ask for an uh, independent appraisal of that building. And whatever money they get from the casino, they could use the rest to pay for the taxes. Because Mr. Lewis owes $75,000 approximately back taxes on that building. And, uh, and the, the, uh, I speak to people who were at the public hearing for that. 
And uh, the city's going to be on the hook for utilities for that. And I don't think we can afford that. I don't know if that will come up before council or not, but I could speak about that later on also. Uh, in the Sunday paper this week, there was an article about the, the, group, the Republican candidate for mayor, saying about how he's got financial troubles, he lost the building to foreclosure, he had a, a car repossessed, he owed back taxes, he uh, was late on his garbage fees. I don't think we need somebody trying to get the city out of a mess that can't keep his own house clean. So, uh, that's, I don't think that's right. One last thing, I have a question. Why was the meeting moved to 6 o'clock now? It used to be at 6.30. Um, I had asked that that occur because Mr. Loscombe obtained employment and he um, often began his work in the evening hours. So I wanted to be sure that he would be able to be present for the entirety of council meetings. Okay. That's a good reason. But I, I think for a lot of citizens that come here, it's a little inconvenient. People work till 5 or 5.30. It's a, a big rush to get here. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Good evening, Council. David Dobson, uh, resident Good evening. of Grant. Good Taxes evening. Taxes paid. Uncompensated by the IRS, by the way. I didn't fit the description. <laughs> and I'd like to uh, approach you with a little thing that Thank you. Thank you. One is and I have a little, uh, a little uh, I'm not thank you. It's a, it's a one thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a, oh, thanks. So don't, don't wind it too tight. It'll continue to work. <laughs> Take care no, of the little boy. I think they're all, <laughs> it's all the same, each page. Um, yeah. As you can see there, that's a print out of uh, the fine print. And I did encircle an area where uh, I'll read out of the book. What began as an effort by Kentucky to help a single company in Appalachia raise capital by keeping state income taxes withheld from its workers' paychecks has grown to more than 2,700 com companies in 19 states when this book was first published. The big banks, car makers, insurers, a host of Canadian, Chinese, European, Japanese, companies all get to profit by pocketing the taxes withheld from their American workers' paychecks. Since the fine print came out in hardback, two more states have joined this trend, Oregon and Pennsylvania. Now, uh, in other words, they're going to deduct your PA state income tax and keep it in their pocket as a sort of subsidy or something like that. No wonder you poor people get asked if you expect manna from heaven by our state officials. It's no wonder. And the name of the book is The Fine Print. It's the latest out. Uh, I don't know if this one's available for loan at the library. I paid $17 for it at the bookstore. There's also another one. It's the oldest one, perfectly legal. Uh, if you get a uh, register your company in the Cayman Islands. You can even, uh, one executive even put the uh, tax savings uh, into his pocket, the t entire, for the whole company. And by the way, if they're registered in the Cayman Islands, be leery of investing there because uh, the small stockholders have to go to the Cayman Islands if they plan to sue. So, and then there's free lunch, which is a lot of freebies handed out to very wealthy people at taxpayers' expense, like our stadium over there. Forty million dollars handed out, and uh, what do we have to show for it? We tore the old one down, which hardly had a crack in it. And uh, last week I mentioned about the water bill. Please keep that in mind. And uh, there was an issue raised about signage. Well, it's all over the city. 
our signs are terrible. There are some are faded. On the 900 block of, uh, of uh, Crown and uh, I think it's Beach Street, there's a faded stop sign. It's already silver, showing silver. And a lady just went right through it. It didn't hit her. A register and she upset another car and and there, there was a big hoopla about it in an accident so our signs are terrible you can't some streets you can't tell what street you're on or you have to stop and, and really practically take a look or it's not safe you're you're gonna cause accidents and stuff so and uh, I really appreciated your little story Mrs. Evans about uh, economic activity and the colleges and how austere a college, uh, a middle class college uh, person's life has to be. They don't have money to go to the steakhouse. They don't have money to go to the lobster house. Uh, they don't have money for very much of anything and uh, it, it's entirely ridiculous uh, the way this is portrayed like we're going to have so much economic activity. And by the way, uh, I was downtown, I think Tuesday, and somebody was touring the town in a bunch of backpacks. And they were, I don't know if they were from the college or where I thought they might be, but they just walked out in front of cars and did what they wanted. And uh, against traffic signals and everything else. Uh, like they own the place. So if that's the kind of economic activity we're encouraging, I, I, I don't need to pay more car insurance and I certainly don't want to hit it somebody crossing against the signals. So uh, one final thing with uh, Mulberry Street, when they narrowed that, if there's anything we could do to get rid of that parking up there, anything whatsoever, it's entirely ridiculous. It's like you're driving drunk down the road. Maybe if you had a half a bottle of whiskey, you, you could make all, <laughs> all the swears. And keeping in mind that there's going to be college students and everybody parking in, or crossing in front of there, and we're going to have bad weather where the street is covered with ice or snow. And, you know, it's just a, a recipe for disaster. So those parking spaces shouldn't be there. Absolutely not. And, uh, well, Thank you for uh, listening, and uh, don't forget, if you uh, don't try to acquire these books and read them, you're somebody else's bull, and you'll get the golden parrot. Bok, bok. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mrs. Craig, if we could um, maybe send a memo to DPW concerning that stop sign at Crown Avenue. Um, hopefully, you know, I, I, I recognize, and we were discussing this prior to the meeting, that um, the budget appears to have been frozen, but I think in some instances the mayor is going to be able to speak with the, the controller for necessary items that would involve public safety, I'm sure. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Um, first, uh, this evening, just on the agenda, uh, momentarily here, uh, five, uh, five D, uh, repealing resolution number fifty, uh, twenty twelve, appointing John Moore to the uh, architectural uh, review board for another another five year term. Um, came to my attention uh, earlier that I believe uh, this individual was originally appointed uh, sixteen years ago, I believe in nineteen ninety seven. Would I be correct in that? Yes. Uh, I mean, from what I understand uh, in relation to the city code, uh, individuals who are appointed to such boards, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, are only allowed two consecutive five-year terms. Is that correct? Well, actually, I'm going to address this under motions, and I'm going to ask our solicitor to do so as well. He's done a great deal of research on this matter. and. Um, the ordinance that we'll be referencing is specific to the HARB. Okay, I look forward to hearing that later on. I'll move on uh, to some other business. Uh, Tuesday I had uh, the opportunity to uh, meet with the uh, West Granton uh, High Park Neighborhood Watch. Uh, Tuesday evening they had a walkthrough of the uh, L.A. Lewis building. I know uh, it was addressed earlier this evening. 
And uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to have been able to walk through that building. Uh, it's a nice building inside. Uh, if anybody hasn't had a chance to get, get in there, uh, they did have another walk through this evening. Um, but it, it certainly is a structure that can uh, be utilized for the intended purpose by the group. Uh, looking over the plans, they, they do uh, intend on doing a lot of good things over there. Uh, it's an investment that I, I think is surely needed in that neighborhood. Uh, you know, they, they look to provide uh, educational resources, whether it's uh, you know, tutoring or, or learning type center. Uh, they, they look to enter a partnership with the Scranton School District uh, to allow that to take place. Uh, they also uh, talk about uh, putting in basketball courts, uh, boxing rings, uh, bringing in professional boxing coaches and uh, Olympic uh, boxing trainers. Uh, so I, I do think it's a, it's a good project uh, for that part of town. I commend them for uh, all their work, and, and they do state in their letter here they have a lot of support from local leaders in the community, State Senator Blake, uh, Representative Flynn, our county commissioners, Mayor Doherty, uh, Scranton City Council, the, the school district, and many other uh, political uh, organizations, local churches and civic organizations. So it's grateful for the opportunity to go through there. I, I commend them for their uh, ongoing work in that part of town. They've done a lot of good things through the years, and this is certainly another prime example of of what they're trying to do over there. And I, I do look forward to the project coming into fruition and uh, seeing those things take place uh, in the future. Uh, finally this evening, I uh, noticed in the paper, I believe it was yesterday, uh, that a motion for reconsideration was filed in court in, in regards to the university project with Leahy Hall and the demolition. And the reconsideration uh, was asking uh, the court to reconsider allowing uh, for the university to provide a, a traffic study uh, that was never provided uh, to the zoning board or council or to HARB. And, you know, looking back at it today, I, I do think that that would have been an important aspect of this project. Uh, that was never done. Uh, you know, as you drive through downtown daily going Jefferson Avenue and Linden Street, uh, as it stands now, there's a lot of pedestrian traffic. And when you're looking to add to structures and, and, and develop, uh, you're only going to make it more chaotic and you're only going to add more pedestrian traffic. That's just, you know, common sense. Uh, you know, you really don't have to do a lot of homework on that. And, I, and I, that, is a, that should be a cause for concern uh, with this project. And I do believe that uh, the court should allow uh, this motion for reconsideration to be approved. And I do think the university should provide a traffic study. Uh, there's some serious concerns, uh, not to disrespect the students of the school, but um, many of whom have a lack of regard for uh, you know, cars transporting back and forth. Uh, a lot of them don't pay attention. They cut in front of you. Uh, they have no regard for any uh, cars going through uh, you know, intersections. And I think that needs to be addressed, uh, especially when we're looking to add and, and expand, or the university's looking to add and expand. I think uh, a suggestion to them would be to uh, look into uh, constructing skywalks on Mulberry Street, Jefferson <coughs> Avenue, Linden Street, all the main arteries where there's heavy pedestrian traffic with the, with the students. Uh, when you take a look, the hospital has one. Um, I know of other colleges and institutions that have them. I know Bloomsburg has it, Penn State has it. You know, with the millions and millions that the university brings in, I don't think it would uh, certainly go over their budget to uh, construct some skywalks. I think they should seriously take a look at that with this project. But I do hope that uh, the motion for reconsideration is granted. Uh, and it's my understanding that if it's not, uh, there will be an injunction filed uh, to prevent the demolition of that building on Monday uh, because a study should be done. It's uh, a serious concern uh, of, of safety and regard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bay Ferranis, Granton. I, I just want to speak because of what Les Spindler said. He was referring last week to what Mr. Schumacher said about Frank Joyce. Marie Schumacher and myself, these are our opinions. We have every right to say it. You're public officials. And Mr. McGough said last week this is no place for someone from the podium to say things about people on council. Yes, it is. You're public officials. We have every right to voice our opinions. Just because uh, Les Spindler said we don't have proof, he doesn't know that. He has no idea what kind of proof we have. And just because you, Mr. Joyce, sit there and say it isn't true doesn't mean it's not true. So it's a question of who people want to believe, us or you. That's their choice. But we have every right to say how we feel, every right. And we will continue to do so. You can sit here and say all you want. 
contra contradictory to what we say. Doesn't mean it's true. What's that expression? Thou dost protest too much? That's all. I just want this, this council to know that we as citizens have every right to come here and voice our opinions. Whether you like it or whether you don't, we have that right. It's called freedom of speech. And just because a council member up there says we have no right, yes, we do. And I hope Mr. McGough doesn't become president of the next council because he will try to stop people from talking. And most people will probably listen to him because they think what he's saying is true, but it's not. They have a right to say how they feel, your public officials. And you don't know the kind of proof that we have. We don't say things lightly. We don't say things that we don't feel are true. We don't just make stuff up. We really strongly believe what we say. And Marie Schumacher deserves that respect. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Andy Grantonians. I wasn't really going to speak. I was here to listen. But you're, you have a right to criticize decisions of the board. Their decision, not their family, not anything else. And if anyone believes that somebody did something dishonest, he can file charges and bring it up before the board if they believe they did something that bad. Then the courts will decide whether this or that. But like I said before, you have no right to criticize anybody's family or anything like that. Only their decisions, even their personal action. I wouldn't care if any of you got divorced and got married or had a girl on the side. That doesn't affect me. What affects me is your decisions up at that board. What you do affects me and affects every citizen in Scranton. So if you don't like the decisions of the council, then come before the council and voice your dissatisfaction with their vote. But don't impugn anything on their honesty or this or that, whatever. That's not your prerogative to do it. If you believe they did something wrong, then file charges. That's all. And let the courts decide, or whoever here in board or so and so decide. I'm getting tired of people getting up here and complaining that this person is dishonest, that person is dishonest. Nobody is dishonest unless it's proven that they are dishonest. In Innuendos does not count, and that's small of people that have them. Like I said before, only your decisions that affect you is important. Whatever you do up there, like when you're going to raise the taxes, that affects me. So I got a right to go up there and criticize about the taxes. That's my right. Whether you cannot say, though, that you're raising your taxes because you're getting a cut of your taxes or you want to get a big raise because of the taxes, that's not there to do. You have no right to do that. You call. I know people get up and say a lot of things they shouldn't be saying. I understand that. But you should only say things, like I said before, that affect you personally or your neighbor or whatever affects you. And don't criticize anybody for their actions unless you can prove that they did something dishonest or were biased or anything like that. You have to be able to prove it. And if you're not willing to prove it, keep your mouth shut. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Is you. there anyone else? This is, oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Hey, Chrissy. Last week. Oh, I didn't believe that. No one told me. Ah. <laughs> uh. well, Frank, our first picture that week. I tell you right now. Hope they win tomorrow night. Happy to work tomorrow, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? 5A. 5A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Uh, yes, yeah, very quickly. Uh, first of all, uh, we received a letter from. Yes. Uh, and what it did was it gave us some clarification to the uh, request that it's, that it's not looking for. 
that they were not looking for permit parking for the entire block that would mm -hmm. hinder some of the um, commercial establishments there. But uh, they just gave some clarification, which I thought was uh, very nice. It, it, it does uh, present a reasonable argument for permit parking, and uh, I hope that uh, you know it, it's seriously looked into. Um, next. Uh, the Pell meeting on Monday, uh, very short but somewhat informative, and I provided Mr. Joyce with some of the information that was um, provided at the, the Pell meeting. Um, but suffice to say that uh, through those meetings, uh, there is some optimism um, for stability I guess um, moving forward through the end of the year and uh, I'm sure Mr. Joyce uh, will have more to say on it but uh, just that the the meetings do continue and uh, that some very useful information is being provided um, and last thing I had a citizen's request I just said I, I uh, as far as the street light on Ferdinand Street was concerned, I just wanted to let the person that sent the request uh, to me that I, I did pass it on and I asked Mrs. Craig if she would uh, please contact Joyce Electric on their behalf. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. you. And Councilman Rogan, do you have comments or motions? Yes, thank you very much. Um, a couple items tonight. Um, I guess I'll start off with some of the comments that were made from the podium. Um, regarding Mr. Joyce and Frank I apologize for bringing this up again um, I just want to say I everyone has the right to come and criticize our votes criticize where somebody stands on an issue support where they stand on an issue and I think the comments made last week were out of line I, I don't believe somebody could come up here and accuse a council person of voting a certain way to take a job or get votes unless they could prove it um, and if that's the case, they should bring that forward. But I've known Mr. Joyce for quite a few years. Um, we don't always agree on everything, but I, I do know that he's an honorable person, and, and I, I take him at his word. A um, um, couple more items. Um, one we did receive um, yesterday in the mail, um, the public notice regarding the action plan for January uh, 2014 through December 2014. And I'd like to thank Mrs. Evans for scheduling the caucus as well um, so we could hear from the public. Um, just looking through, there are, as always, many more applicants than there are funds available. Um, so following hearing from the public, um, council members um, we could all discuss again as we have in the past and put together a plan that um, tries to represent the city and help as many people as we can, um, as I've stated, many times and I think many of us agree two of the top priorities on this list are paving and police officers um, because of some of the cuts that were made in the police department going back a few years ago that the mayor made we were unable to fund COMD officers for our neighborhoods luckily now we can now once again fund them and have our, our patrols in our low to moderate income areas where, where they're needed most so that's definitely something that, that I'm going to support and hopefully the public and, and my colleagues do as well. But I certainly look forward to working on that. Um, I spoke to a resident over the week, oh, during the course of the week regarding the condition of the firehouse on East Mountain. Um, the resident reported many problems regarding the roof of the house. So before speaking about it, I wanted to reach, I reached out to some members of the fire department and uh, Mr. Judge, the president of the fire, fire union, and he confirmed that in fact the roof at the firehouse is leaking um, and, and the leak has gotten so bad, I believe part of the carpet had to be taken out. I know that Mrs. Novembrino has stated we're trying to uh, not spend as much money the rest of the year and when it comes to, to cutting costs, I'm all for that, but in an instance like this, where if this leak continues, it's only going to cost more to fix it down the line, and we certainly need to make sure that firehouse is in good shape for our firemen. Additionally, while speaking um, to firefighters and, and Mr. Judge, um, th they are gravely concerned about the condition of, of the apparatus that they're using. Um, some of them are older than me, 
1985, um, some of the trucks that our men are using were, were first made. Um, I did reach out to Mr. Loskin. I understand he isn't feeling well, so I, I, I will discuss these issues with him as well. Um, but Mrs. Craig, could we, could we please send a letter to the mayor and the fire chief um, asking that the issue at the East Mountain Firehouse regarding the roof is addressed as quickly as possible? Um, also regarding the condition of the inside of any water damage from from the rain and with, with the storms we've had the last two days, I can't imagine that um, that, that leaky roof fared too well because those were, were two uh, pretty big storms. So these are things that, you know, stitch in time saves nine type things where if we're spending a little bit of money now to fix these items, um, maintenance on our police vehicles, maintenance on our fire trucks, fixing a leaky roof before it, it ruins the carpets. These are the things that anyone would do, um, even in lean times, to save money in the long run. So whatever needs to be done to fund these items, um, we need to do it, because we certainly can't have, have these problems with uh, one of the most important departments in the city. Um, two other items. I did read the report um, regarding Lake Scranton Road, um, and I did take the time to go up, and I did see what Mr. Elman mentioned. Um, I, I forget the name of the street with the weight restrictions. Um, I certainly see that and also by reading the report it seems that water damage is probably the, the number one reason why the road is deteriorated. Um, I, I think the solution is to fix the road. Um, instead of pursuing truck bans and all these other items, the road needs to be fixed. Um, in, in this scenario it does seem a little bit different than in other areas, especially in the west side where there are many routes around. Um, it, it does seem that there really is only the one route. And uh, by reading through the study, it, it did cite drainage issues and the condition, the age of the road for being two of the top reasons why, um, why the road is in the shape it is. Um, finally, over the August recess, I had the chance to attend um, an event up in Susquehanna County, actually. It was a compressed natural gas station where they have vehicles running off natural gas. And from speaking to representatives from the gas industry, um, there is a push and there are grants available for municipalities to convert their vehicles from running on diesel fuel to natural gas. I know from reading, this is very popular out in California. Um, a lot of buses have been converted. It's cleaner um, for the environment. It's locally produced. Um, it's not foreign and it's, it's very um, cost effective. Um, the cost of uh, a gallon equivalent of compressed natural gas is around $2 a gallon compared to the cost of diesel, which is running close to $4 a gallon. So this is something I think the city needs to look into doing in the future, especially when grants can be obtained to convert the vehicles to run on natural gas. And I know there are, are great strides being made having the infrastructure brought into our area. Um, like I said, just two counties up, there already are many marts that have compressed natural gas stations, I'm open for the public, and I would like to see the day when instead of our DPW fueling up at the city diesel pump, they could be fueling up at, at the natural gas, the city natural gas pump, um, if we could do it, especially through, through grants and cost savings. Um, I do have a couple comments on agenda items, but I will wait till they come up, so that is all for now. Thank you. Thank you, and Councilman. Joyce, do you have comments or motions tonight? Yes, uh, very briefly. Um, I'm not going to be too long. Uh, Mr. McGough did give me some information that he obtained from the Pell meeting, just to give everyone an update where we're at. Uh, the cash balance of the city, and the general fund, is $6.8 million. We have $300,000 in accounts payable. And we did receive $300,000 from Guy Singer for fees and permits related to their development. Over the past week, I had the opportunity to speak with uh, Ms. McAndrew, our business administrator. I uh, met with her uh, later on, on uh, Monday afternoon. Our city clerk, uh, uh, Mrs. Crake, also attended, and she uh, took some very copious notes. In the position, uh, from the position that we're in right now, uh, as far as payroll is concerned, as far as paying the critical expenses that are, that are important to our employees, such as uh, paying for their health care costs uh, and keeping the city afloat, 
Uh, she believes that we are in a fine position to make it through the end of the year and that we're not going to have any problems. Uh, it's typical uh, to other years, uh, they're, they're, the, the city is holding up some bills. <clears throat> and this was a practice that was done in the past. I know each year we um, bring in prior year expenses. That's in just about every budget that I've seen. Some years it's more, some years it's less. And I also uh, mentioned to her, you know, what the administration was planning on sending down as far as the uh, budget is concerned. Obviously, we know we have a real problem. Uh, Pell is talking about a 117% tax increase, which would cripple the, the residents of the city, in my opinion. Basically, at this point, uh, the administration was just um, getting under uh, development as far as the budget's concerned. There are some ideas that uh, were discussed, such as a possible scoop out, refinancing of debt, the commuter tax, um, trying to let lessen uh, costs with our workers' compensation insur insurance, and also the possibility of a health care consortium, which I know was brought up in the past and um, didn't quite go through because of uh, the county uh, not wanting to be involved. But at this point, you know, I, I'm not quite satisfied because I don't know a figure or, or a percentage of, or, or, or even a goal that um, the administration has at this point. So I um, did take the liberty to call the mayor's office and request a meeting with him. And I'm going to meet with him next week at 4.30 on Wednesday and discuss my ideas on how to get the tax increase lowered and hopefully um, get some of these things into action because we don't have a lot of time at this point. We're only, the deadline to submit the budget obviously is November 15th. That's the administration's deadline. And I think the sooner that um, we act or the sooner that action is taken, the better off we'll be and hopefully the blow will be able to be lessened quite a bit. And that's all. Thank you. Good evening. I wish to begin with a brief update regarding the Scranton Parking Authority's appearance at a county tax assessment hearing yesterday. Mr. Michael Washoe, who represented the SPA, contested the appraised dollar amount for square footage of the commercial properties the SPA leases to businesses based on the dollar amount for square footage paid by three neighboring properties. In addition, Mr. Washoe referred to the approximate annual $3.5 million bond payment and operation costs related to the parking garages. We must remember, however, that the city of Scranton funds the difference between the actual bond payment due and the payment made by Mr. Washoe in his capacity as receiver. Thus, the city would receive less tax revenue from the commercial garage spaces while it continues to make SPA bond payments. The hearing decision is due within the next few weeks. In a related matter, tax assessment hearings will be conducted on October 17, 2013 for 27 Scranton businesses and on October 24th for Slibco, an arm of the Greater Scranton Chamber of Commerce and for Pennsylvania American Water Company. Mrs. Craig, please send a letter to the mayor and city solicitor urging the mayor to direct Attorney Kelly to attend these hearings and contest lower tax appraisals in light of our distressed city's financial status. In addition, some of these entities who sought loans, KOZs, and financial agreements from the city of Scranton now look to pay decreased taxes 
and are looking toward the uh, tax assessment hearing to provide that for them. Scranton homeowners cannot afford to pay increasing tax burdens for city businesses as well as local tax exempt nonprofits. Next, during City Council's August recess, some city residents brought to my attention an error made by the administration and City Council. Apparently, the law department drafted legislation which Council adopted in violation of a city ordinance regarding the Commission for Architectural and Urban Design and reappointment of board members. In response to residents' requests, I asked Council Solicitor Hughes to research the ordinance and advise Council as to how it should proceed to make corrections if necessary. And I now defer to Solicitor Hughes for his comments. And I also have a written memo that was supplied by Solicitor Hughes to council members, which I'll now distribute. Attorney Hughes. Yes, thank you, Madam President. Uh, before I, I get to that, uh, it's interesting on what Councilman Rogan stated, you know, with uh, the natural gas. Uh, just so everybody's aware, they can go look at it. Uh, Pennsylvania American Water Company is building a compressed gas, natural gas filling station for all of their vehicles over on Stafford Avenue. It's under construction now and they're going to convert all of their vehicles to natural gas. From what I understand, it's not going to be open to the public. I also think that Verastro uh, Beverage, they have an application in now to convert their trucks, and they're building a refueling station down where they are in Old Forge, and I think that that's going to be open to the public uh, to buy uh, natural gas if they have natural gas cars. Um, so they're two exciting developments that are you know, going forward, and uh, you can save substantial amounts of money, you know, uh, converting to natural gas, and also I understand there's a lot less maintenance, uh, as long as it's compressed natural gas. Uh, I have clients in the interstate trucking industry, and uh, there's a real problem uh, converting those right now because they don't have the type of engines, but that's another issue for another, another time. But, uh, you know, regarding this uh, and with HARB and with Mr. Miller's comments, uh, I did, at the request of the President, uh, research this issue. I wrote a memo. I believe that everyone has right now. And to be very succinct on this, um, and it's a very simple issue, uh, and there's really two issues involved in this because when Mr. Moore and also other people were appointed, their terms were to start in October of uh, the years, and it was October 14th. Uh, that is incorrect. Um, there's a case, Volpe v. Strickland goes back to 1975. I cited in my memo uh, that the real appointments on the HARB Commission all commence on April 1st and terminate on April 1st. How this got extended uh, to Mr. Moore being reappointed when he was reappointed to his third consecutive office, uh, I believe it starts on October 11th um, to uh, October 11th was the original one, um, 2007 to October 11th, 2012. That was an error. It should have been from April 1st, uh, 2007 to April 1st, 2012. Then when he was reappointed to his fourth term, uh, that again stated that it would run from October 11th, 2012 to October 11th, 2017. That is incorrect. Um, the, no matter when you're reappointed or the, the term starts uh, from where it is established in the, in the ordinance um, and not to when the successor is appointed. So that's the first incorrect issue. Uh, the, it's not in the city code as the President stated, um, as to the applicability to HARB, uh, as to the appointments. Uh, it is right in the ordinance itself, which is file of council number 45 of 1996, which amended 
file a council number 38 of 1976. Um, I did not go through it to see what the amendments were. To me, it almost looks like file a council number 45, 1996, really replaced uh, the, the uh, ordinance uh, 38 of 1976. Um, what it states that for the members under Article 4, which is on page 9 of the ordinance for membership, there would be nine members appointed to the HARB board, um, and it sets forth what the requirements are for each of them, uh, a registered architect, a registered engineer, a licensed contractor, licensed real estate broker, a uh, member from the Architectural Heritage Association, one property owner who lives within the historic district, um, one member who has a professional training as an urban planner, architectural historian, etc., uh, one property owner at large, and one other person who by training experience or interest is qualified to carry out the duties as a member of the commission. So that's the requirements uh, for the nine members of the, uh, of the commission. They are appointed for a five-year term by the mayor with the advice and consent of council. Uh, and it was to be staggered terms. So there were nine members so that uh, two were to be appointed uh, for two-year two terms and then one was to be appointed for just uh, one term uh, in staggered terms. So that the original appointments were made uh, by Mayor Connors. Uh, there were two four-year appointments, two five-year appointments, one third-year appointment, and then the other appointments uh, were after that uh, for two, two for three years, two for two years, and one for one year. Um, so that's the way that the commission was set up. Um, the first appointments and all the appointments should start on April 1st uh, for a five-year term. Uh, somehow it got out of sync uh, when Mr. Moore was uh, reappointed for his third consecutive term. What it states is that members shall not serve, this is under Article 4B, appointment terms of membership on page 11 of the ordinance. Members shall not serve more than two consecutive five-year terms. No member shall be reappointed until five years after the completion of their previous two-year consecutive terms of service to the Commission. Um, as is set forth in my memo, uh, Mr. Moore has been appointed to his fourth consecutive term. He sat on the Commission for a period of 13 years. Uh, it's in violation of the ordinance. Uh, he never should have been reappointed uh, previously to his third consecutive term, uh, which I believe started in 2007, I believe, um, or 2006 to 2011. Um, that was an improper. He should have stayed off for five years, and then he could have been reappointed. Um, he is serving improperly on the board. He's not qualified to serve uh, on the commission. Um, as such, it's my opinion that any vote that he casts from now on uh, should not count, and he shouldn't attend meetings. He should resign. Uh, however, in anticipation of that, what I did, and I looked at it and decided that his appointment uh, pursuant to the previous resolution, that resolution should be rescinded, which would rescind his appointment to take that so that he would not be able to serve on, you know, on, on the HARP board or on the, on, on the commission. Um, right now, I think that any time that he would vote, it could be challenged that he is sitting there improperly. Um, I think council could take two actions. One could probably write to him and ask him to resign. Uh, and if he didn't, uh, then remove him. But tonight we have on there, I drafted the uh, resolution which would rescind his, his appointment. Um, if you want me to comment on Ms. Rayburn, I also, that's in my memo. Um, she has been, she was appointed to fill a vacancy. And again, her terms were commencing in November. That's improper. Uh, it should have been in April. Uh, she was appointed to fill a vacancy for two years, then reappointed for a five-year term, and recently reappointed for another five-year term. In my opinion, since she served in an interim to complete the uh, pre uh, previous uh, vacancy, um, 
that does not count from the standpoint of what the ordinance requires, that it would be two successive five-year terms. So that it's my opinion that Mr. Moore is serving improperly on the board. He never should have been appointed, uh, but that Ms. Rayburn can continue to con uh, in her position on the HARP Commission. If you have any questions, I'll be free to answer them. Anyone? I have one question. Um, if this was approved, would this negate any votes cast previously by Mr. Moore? <laughs> I, no, I, I, I don't believe so. I think he's been serving there under color of office. Uh, even though the appointment was improper, of course, the, the you know the mayor you know made the appointment uh, and with the advice and consent of council, council approved it. So I think that he does have at least color of title uh, in his position. Um, you know, it almost you know you couldn't go back and say that all the all of the votes that he had were were improper. I'm saying from this day on that if he if there's a meeting and let's say next week, uh, before council would vote on, assuming that there's gonna, it's gonna, that the resolution to be introduced tonight, um, and it wouldn't be passed until next week, and there's a hard meeting uh, in the meantime, and if he voted, and his vote was a deciding vote, I think that that vote, in fact, I know that that vote could legally be challenged because it's improper. He, right now, Council's taken a position to remove them, or at least if the ordinance, I mean, if the resolution, you know, would be would be introduced. Uh, but to make it retroactive, no, I don't believe that could be done, um, especially since I think his vote was a deciding vote on the YWCA, and they've already started demolition. I know they've taken the they're, they're taking the columns down and everything else up there now. So, uh, no, I, I, it'd be my opinion that it could not be retroactive. Well, thank you, Attorney Hughes. And it certainly seems that the city administration proposed a HARB member for reappointment, and city council approved the reappointment without knowledge of the provisions of the 1996 ordinance. Uh, since the HARB has stated that it intends to develop bylaws, and as such, any change to file of council number 45 of 1996 requires council approval. Council should act now to remedy the legislation that was drafted and approved contrary to law by repealing resolution 50 of 2012. Uh, in addition, I would ask attorney Hughes to draft a letter to the mayor asking him to request the resignation of Mr. Moore and to appoint a qualified member to replace him. Further, I have asked Mrs. Craik and our staff to research reappointments to all boards and commissions, including the reappointment to the Scranton Housing Authority that is included in fifth order for introduction on tonight's agenda. I have been advised that this resolution is correct. Um, next, since Madam President, I, I would state when it comes to authorities, that's all by state statute, uh, such as the redevelopment authority, the parking authority, the housing authority, uh, any authority that's created according to the Pennsylvania Municipalities, uh, you know, Authority Act. Um, to my knowledge, there's no requirement in there that that they only serve for so many terms. Uh, I think this is a unique situation, uh, you know, with the with the hard board. But I believe that, you know, to have it researched to see about the other boards and commissions if there's anything like that, um, and certainly if there isn't, and it's council's decision that maybe some of those ordinances should be amended to provide that, uh, so that you don't have somebody appointed for a period of, you know, decades. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next, since Northeast Revenue Service is handling tax and garbage fee delinquencies for the city, perhaps it might be able to look into wage tax delinquencies as well. Therefore, Mrs. Craig, please send a letter to Mayor Doherty requesting that he contact Berkheimer, the earned income tax collector, 
and NRS regarding the feasibility of having NRS collect wage tax wage tax delinquencies. And um, just two final thoughts very Seven, quickly. Uh, yes. Just could I um, something that came up the other day. Would they also be capable of collecting the uh, delinquent rental registration? I don't see why not. I don't know if we're adding so much to one you know, they've done such a great job of you know collecting delinquencies so far whether we're extending this too far but I, I think that that's something uh, that we could look into for at we least 2014 we now. can certainly ask and if you could include that in the letter as well please Mrs. Thank you. Craig you're welcome um, I know there has been much discussion about the natural gas industry and its cost savings well the cost saving effectiveness and certainly um, that can't be disputed but I think we also have to think about human health and what is happening within the state of Pennsylvania as this natural gas drilling is occurring and there are many many serious issues in Susquehanna County alone and uh, I believe mo our priority should be to protect our air our water and our soil <coughs> so that we as human beings and future generations are protected and I think you know sometimes you have to ask yourself is it more important to save the money or is it more important to save your health and your health is something you can't buy um, secondly uh, I just wanted to comment again briefly on um, uh, the issue of uh, speakers that has been raised by council members um, we have council members here since uh, 2010 who were not privy to what occurred prior to that time. However, many of you in attendance tonight and many of you at home, I'm sure, remember what transpired in council chambers prior to 2010. Cameras were removed for a period of time. Speakers were searched before they could enter the building. There was great animosity between speakers and council members. Um, great provocation on both sides. And very, very ugly comments made by both. By council speakers about council members, candidates for office, and by council members about those of you who came to that podium and as a result for many 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 years it even precedes my seating in 2004 on this council these council chambers were a circus and I'm sure you remember that and what changed was a reciprocity of respect and concern between city council and the people now that includes the right of free speech and there were times I remember this very well too prior to 2010 that representatives of the ACLU sat in that audience checking for violations of such when council members would stop a speaker's right to express himself or herself and the fact of the matter is inappropriate foul by that I mean foul obscene language cannot be used it's not permitted on the airways uh, so again that is that is not permitted any threat of violence 
toward anyone in the audience or any council member. That is not permitted. And the ACLU recognizes those instances. But it's also important to recognize the rights of the people who take the time to come here and speak. And that's what's been going on since 2010. And as a result, the atmosphere, the climate of these noble chambers changed dramatically. And I remember, you know, I, I, I listen to everything everyone says, and I remember the times when, you know, uh, some of the same people came here and, and, you know, had a litany of disparaging, voiced a litany of disparaging remarks against uh, Mayor Doherty. Others uh, disparaged, for example, political candidates such as Mr. DeBilio, who was council president at the time when he was seeking the office of mayor. So I think what's important here is to remember, to respect one another, and not to violate civil liberties. And I fear, you know, at any point in the future, when that starts to occur, when limitations begin to be placed once again, there could be a deterioration back into the atmosphere that we worked so very hard to eliminate in these chambers. And that's it. Um, I'd like to respond to that because I, people have a right to express an opinion. People do not have a right to make accusations of wrongdoing. And, and that's what took place. And, and that is out of order by our own rules of counsel and by any legal precedent that you can find. Uh, personal attacks and personal accusations are not permissible. They're not legal. And, and, that's, I, what, and I, that's what I responded to. And I, I believe that that's what um, was done last week also. Well, we didn't have those responses years ago, did we? But more so, I, I, think, um, I think you might be overstepping by saying that's illegal. I don't know that that would stand up against the First Amendment. So uh, certainly, you know, you enter other realms of of maybe possible lawsuits against individuals, but by and large, as I said, there's been a significant change in the demeanor of these chambers and the behavior of both speakers and council members for the better. And I just hope that you're not going to return to the days of pre-2010 when you're going to be gaveled out of order and told you can't say that, you shouldn't say this, and then ultimately you're removed. And more so, I hope you're not going to see a return to the days when a police officer stood in the back to enforce your removal because that police officer is needed on the city streets, not in this, not in this chamber. So I hope, as I said, I hope the decorum stays as is and that there is not that return to the terrible mistakes of the past. And that's it. 3B, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to take all necessary actions to implement the consolidated submission for community planning and development programs to be funded under the Community Development Block Grant Program, Home Investment Partnership Program, and Emergency Solutions Grants Program for the period beginning January 1, 2014. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C, appointment of Thelma Wheeler, 1001 Jackson Street, apartment 303, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 
18504 as a member of the board of the Scranton Housing Authority for an additional five-year term. Ms. Wheeler's current term expires on September 27, 2018. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D, repealing resolution number 50, 2012, appointing John Moore, 315 13th Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Historical Architecture Review Board for an additional five-year term, whose current term expired on October 11, 2012, and whose new term will expire on October 11, 2017. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second? Second. Thank you. On the question? On the question. Um, and I believe attorney who has addressed this. I'm, I'm likely going to vote yes this week just to extend Mr. Loskin the same courtesy that he extended to me um, and to vote on this issue. Um, my only concern is if this is an action for counsel or if this is an action for the courts to actually remove him um, from. The courts? Well, counsel has rejected numerous appointees to uh, boards and authorities, and they've all been seated. Well, at, we have objected for various reasons, but this is a unique situation where um, the law states that you may only serve two consecutive five-year terms. Then you have to take a five-year absence, and then you can return yeah. for additional five-year terms. No, and I, and I agree, and I thank Attorney Hughes for pulling, putting all this information together. Um, like I said, I glad it's only the first reading. I am going to look things over and research a little bit more. And, and like I said, I think the full board should have a, have a say as well. Madam President, if I could just you know, sure. address you know, Mr. Rogan's uh, comment. If the only way that that could happen is that a member of the public would have to file an action against you know, Mr. Moore, uh, whether that would ever happen uh, would probably be unlikely. Uh, the second way that he could be challenged is that if the mayor would appoint a person in his place, if Mr. Moore does not resign, and council would approve that person, then that person would have to file an action against Mr. Moore called Quo Waranto. And it's by what authority do you hold the position? Um, they'd have to hire a lawyer. They'd have to go into court, have a hearing. Uh, there'd be expense involved. Um, this is the problem that you have in either, either if you do nothing, whether somebody in the public would step up and bring the action, or if, if you do nothing, would the mayor then appoint a replacement? And then that person, approved by counsel, would then have to sue Mr. Moore if he didn't resign. So it's a legal quagmire in there as to if you don't proceed, there's, there's a real problem. He's going to continue to sit if he doesn't resign. Um, but I, I think that you know, maybe after tonight and until next week's meeting, um, if Mr. Moore resigns, then you don't have to adopt a resolution next week. Personally, I think he should. I think that would be, you know, looking at it and seeing what it is. He's been, you know, he's been reappointed two consecutive times when he shouldn't have been. And he certainly sat there now for almost mm -hmm. seven years when he shouldn't have sat. Um, so I think that it's incumbent upon him if he tenders his resignation, then there'd be no reason for count. We wouldn't have to take any action next week. The mayor could appoint, you know, he could, he could appoint a replacement that have to be approved by council. So I think by introducing this tonight and by passing it, it puts the pressure on Mr. Moore to do the right thing, which would be to resign. And then council wouldn't have to, wouldn't have to vote on the, or on, on the resolution next week. I'm so used to saying ordinances instead of mm -hmm. resolutions. So you wouldn't have to vote on the resolution next week, but the ball would be in Mr. Moore's court. Thank you, Attorney Hughes. All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
The ayes have it and so moved. 6A, reading by title, file of council number 45, 2013, an ordinance approving and accepting the updated City of Scranton capital budget for the year 2014, the first year revision and extension of the 2013 five-year plan. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of council number 46, 2013, an ordinance creating and establishing a new account for the City of Scranton's Office of Economic and Community Development titled Pennsylvania DCD Housing and Redevelopment Assistance Program, HRA, revolving loan funds account number 19A0101 for the receipt and disbursement of grant funds, DCD HRA grant funds, received from the Scranton-Connell LLC. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works, resolution number 35, 2013, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a supplemental reimbursement agreement number 041222-D with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for the purpose of increasing and reallocating the funds allocated for design, right-of-way, utility costs, and construction funding for the Rockwell Avenue Bridge Project. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Public Works? I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Finance, resolution number 36, 2013, accepting a donation of $100 from Anthracite Heritage Museum and Iron Furnaces Associates presented to the City of Scranton Fire Department. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage by item 7B. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Rules, resolution number 37, 2013, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a memorandum of agreement that the city of Scranton will cooperate with Lackawanna County in preparing the five-year update of the 2009 Bi-County Hazard Mitigation Plan and appoint city planner Don King as our municipal representative. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works, resolution number 38, 2013, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into an inspection services contract with Shaner Environmental to provide design and construction inspection services for the construction work for the project entitled West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge Improvement Project. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Public Works? I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.